Our final presenter of this session is Peter Harold, Managing Director and CEO of Poseidon Nickel. Peter is an industrial chemist who started his career in oil and gas with Shell. <clears throat> Peter set up Sally Mining slash Panoramic Resources, which developed the Savannah Nickel Project and restarted the land franchise nickel mine near Cambelda. Peter was at, was at Panoramic for 18 years and took the company to over a $1 billion market cap, producing greater than 20,000 tonnes of nickel per annum. Peter has joined Poseidon in 2020. He is also currently the chairman of Rare Foods Australia and abalone producer in Augusta. Thank you. Thanks, Courtney, and uh, thanks everyone for staying. I thought everyone would go after um, Flano's speech. He certainly keeps the room excited. Uh, it's great to be sitting up on the uh, podium there with uh, Rowena. We used to sit opposite each other negotiating off-take agreements for Land Frankie or for, and, and it was really tough going actually, but it's, it's really nice to see Rowena running our own show and it's a very exciting project, so good luck with that. Um, yeah, it's good to be back here again. I first started coming to Diggers and Dealers in 1999 uh, and I think I did my first presentation in about 2002 and I had a one-year-old boy called Oscar and I think I put a slide up of him. He's now 21, taller than me, knocks me around. I've got three boys now who are just about one to leave school. I've got the last school fees about to be paid. And, uh, and I, th I think I've probably done 20 presentations here. So thanks, Diggers, and uh, thanks, everyone, for, uh, for listening to the Poseidon story. Um, we've got a really interesting mix of, of assets, all in nickel and all uh, within spitting distance of Kalgoorlie. Uh, 400 and over 400,000 tonnes of nickel, a bit of gold tailings as well. And, and actually what's really sort of valuable now at the moment is the mills two processing mills, both of which are in relative good, good condition. So at Black Swan, which is a project that I worked on when I was at MPI back in 1995, we developed that project and then it got uh, sold to Utukumpu. MPI bought it back, I'd left by then, and then it was developed and obviously it's, uh, went through a couple of different uh, ownerships and ended up at Norilsk and then Poseidon bought it when it was in care and maintenance in about 2014 for, for a couple of million dollars, uh, which has proven to be a very good buy. So it's a 2.2 million tonne bill, uh, mill built by Lycos uh, back in 2007 and only ran for about 18 months and the nickel price collapsed so they closed and, and left Australia and we were able to pick it up. We've done a feasibility study uh, back in November, which I'll talk a bit about in a minute. We've been doing offtake and debt financing discussions and they're well advanced. We're down to a short list of two and have negotiated documents and, uh, and are very, very close to, to finalising those. And uh, we've got some really exciting exploration targets, which we're actually about to start drilling uh, hopefully next week. Uh, we've also got Lake Johnson, which is another, um, was a lion ore asset, became part of Norilsk, uh, mined a lot of nickel there. There's still 50,000 tonnes of nickel in the Maggie Hayes resource. There's a one and a half million tonne mill built by GRs, last operated in 2014. We also picked this asset up for less than a couple of million dollars. And then there's the famous Windara asset, which was the original uh, Poseidon NL uh, asset back in the, the late uh, 60s, early 1970s. Uh, that produced about 80,000 tonnes of nickel before it converted over to gold. Uh, there's no mill there. The mill was taken down um, some time ago, but there's obviously a head frame underground decline. Uh, there's 100, nearly 150,000 tonnes of nickel, about 1.5%. Uh, there's also the gold tailings. There's a big open pit uh, full of water. People used to water ski in it, apparently. Uh, we're not allowed to do that anymore, but uh, we might be able to use that, or someone might be able to use that water for one of their plants as well close by, and quite a bit of exploration potential there as well. We've got quite a lot of uh, uh, geological exploration in the, in the business. I'm not a geologist, I'm a chemist, and all the geologists have got a different view. Some people love Black Swan, some people think Lake Johnson's got the most prospectivity, and even last week we were talking about Windara and someone in the, in the organisation said that's where they drill the most holes. So everyone's got a different view on the prospectivity. But what we really like about it is the strategic importance. And this slide, very, very important given what's been happening in the last couple of, well, certainly in the last 12 months anyway. So of course everyone knows about the big deal BHP did with those minerals to pick up not only the copper but also the West Musgrove project, which they're continuing on with the development. And that will be about 25,000 tonnes of contained nickel and concentrate coming into to the, uh, the, the system in Kalgoorlie. Uh, Western Areas takeover, that's obviously been pretty topical, uh, picking up um, uh, the uh, IGO picking up Western Areas, which is obviously um, the, the big new ore body that they're developing there, uh, the old uh, Cosmos asset, which has been renamed. And then Cannon Resources was picked up by Kintera, a new player, a Canadian fund, who've raised about 650 million US dollars and are very active in buying uh, 
projects like uh, Cannon's Mount Fisher resource, about 130,000 uh, tonnes of resource, no mill, no mine, so they're buy buying what they consider to be strategic resources in the, uh, in the region. Uh, what we've got is those 400,000 tonnes of resource. We've got mine development. We've got two processing plants, which both of them would cost around about $40 million to refurbish. Uh, it take about a year to refurb. And you know, a lot of the people that are playing in this space now don't have any mills. And just listening to one of the presentations before about the gold side, one of the benefits of being able to explore and develop is, is having mills. And if you can get these mills up and running, you can bring in third party feeds uh, and it becomes quite attractive. And so if you look, for instance, at, uh, at, at the Mincor acquisition, the Wailu uh, uh, purchase uh, just recently, they don't have a mill. So they're taking their material from Cassini down to um, Cambalda, and that contract expires at the end of 25. So I guess they've got a number of options there. They could build their own mill after that. They could keep selling their material to um, BHP, or they could come and, and, and have a chat to us about uh, putting the material through Black Swan. It's about 140 k's away. But that's really their three options. So, and if they want to build a, a processing plant in Quinana and, and produce battery products, then clearly they would want the concentrate themselves. So the option then sort of minimises even further. So I think we've become a lot more strategic just in the last sort of six months. And I think that that's certainly not reflected in our market capitalisation. I mean, everyone's been talking about how important lithium uh, and graphite and, and nickel is in batteries, and I, I think this is a pretty sort of interesting one. I didn't realise, you know, there was more nickel in the, ba the standard battery than there is lithium. Obviously, a lot of graphite as well. So that's an important thing, and I think you know people are starting to understand that. What have we been doing in the last 12 months? We've been pretty busy. We've done the feasibility study. That was a big job. Great team effort by, by our, uh, all the people in our organisation, all the consultants we use. We've upgraded the disseminated resource. That's been a big focus of ours, and there was a lot of drilling we did earlier on in the year. We've increased the grade by about 14%, uh, and we've got an increase in the, in the measured and indicator, which is obviously very important for converting into a, a mining inventory. Um, we've, we've actually been able to work out how to produce a saleable concentrate, because um, prior to uh, us all arriving as a management team, uh, it was going to be difficult to actually sell the material that was going to be produced, given the MGO. So we're going to blend uh, some tailings, some old silver swan tailings, and actually get our iron MGO ratio at the right sort of level. So we'll produce a, a high-grade concentrate, about 15%, which is very, very suitable for smelting. Uh, it's got a bit of arsenic in about 3,000 ppm, well below the, the rejection limit. You pay a bit of a penalty, but it's, it's not a drama. Um, and we've got a lot of exploration potential there as well. Lake Johnson, we've done some drilling down there. We put some um, numbers out just recently. We've raised a bit of money just recently in the last couple of days. We're going to use a fair bit of that to, to drill some of those targets down there. There's a really interesting sort of three to 400 metre wide zone there that's really opening up at Maggie Hayes West, and we want to test that. And notwithstanding, we've already got 50,000 tonnes in a resource below the current mine workings. And then we've got the potential for expansion at Black Swan, which I'll talk about too. So there's an awful lot going on. We've got drill rigs arriving at site next week uh, to do some more drilling in the open pit and, and also targeting a new, uh, a new very, very exciting target off to the side. So it's been a busy time. The feasibility study we did, our base case nickel price was a, was a bit higher than where it is today, but we came in with an MPV of nearly a quarter of a billion dollars for a four-year project, a lot of free cash flow, big IRR because obviously it's a small restart cost. The mill is about a $40 million refurb and there's about $10 million worth of capital underground and then the rest is just working capital to get things going. It's about a 46 to 50 week refurb and as I mentioned before, high grade concentrate, 15%. That's a very, very um, you know, saleable concentrate all around the world. We went out to tender and we had about sort of 10 bids. Um, and given there's only five, four or five smelters in the world that can treat it, you can see there was a lot, obviously a lot of traders involved as well. Low MGO and the arsenic levels are fine too. So that's a very good product for the conventional smelter. And also we are connected to grid power. So from a, an ESG perspective, we've got a low carbon footprint. Um, it's a busy slide, but what I just wanted to really demonstrate there was since the, the original feasibility study was done in 2018, we've added a lot of value. We've increased the resource grade uh, substantially in the open pit from about 0.58 up to 7, over 7. 
Uh, we've got a marketable product, as I said. We've got all this pre-works done. We've probably spent over the last five years about $20 million, most of it underground, re replaced all the ladderways. We've, we've um, uh, rehabilitated the decline all the way to the bottom, 1.7 1, 1 uh, kilometres vertically. We've replaced most of the pump stations. Um, the, the, just the, um, uh, the ladderway was about a $2.5 million job, um, so we've done all of that. Previously, the operation ran with um, you know, using a bore field. We've been able to access um, the federal pit that, that Norton's has got. We can get a five-year water deal there, so that, that, that's a great uh, benefit to us. And as I mentioned before, we've got power to site too, and they can provide us the full 11 megawatts that we need. That's a good sort of slide of what it looks like. The, the, the purple uh, is in on the, uh, the, the closest to me, that's Silver Swan. And the original ore body was about 65,000 tonnes of nickel. It started about 250 metres below surface, went down to about 600 metres. I think it was 65,000 tonnes at 14% nickel. We were mining it, diluted at about 8%, putting it through the concentrator and taking it up to about 20% and then selling it to Finland. Uh, that mine had produced about 140,000 tonnes of contained nickel from the underground and about um, 40,000 tonnes from the open pit. And so you can see there's still a lot of nickel there, another 200,000 tonnes of nickel that we're hope to recover a fair chunk of that. What we're going to mine is below the current open pit, that red zone, uh, at about a million tonne a year, and then from the underground at about 100,000, 80 to 100,000 tonne a year, blend it together and, and do about 1.1 million tonnes through the mill. Uh, in terms of the disseminated, you can see there is a mixture of, of serpentinite and talc carb. And uh, we have just realised we need to do a bit more metallurgical test work on the non-sulphide nickel component. So that's one of the reasons why we've delayed the restart uh, to do some more work. And that drill rig, as I said, arrives next week to start that work. It's about a six month program to actually get all that. Uh, there's about 12 holes we've got to drill. We're, we're confident with the numbers that we've used in the feasibility study, but we just want to check. You know, when you've got a, a low grade disseminated ore body, you don't want to get the metallurgy incorrect and that, and that recovery is very important. Um, so I mentioned before, we've, we've upgraded the disseminated resource, 48% increase in measured indicated. We've got the plant refurbishment work that we've been doing, working out what the exact number's going to be. It's going to be close to $40 million. We've got all the permits to go, so we are ready to start. Everything's in place. But we have noticed, obviously, that continuation in inflation, uh, inflationary pressures. We still don't have an accommodation solution. We're meeting with someone tomorrow who says he might be able to give us 150 rooms in the time frame we're talking, so we're hopeful that that'll give us a solution there. The grid power will be av available, but not until late 2024, uh, November at the earliest. And as I mentioned, we've got to do a bit more work on the, the metal issues. I would have been loved to be standing up here today saying we're pressing the button and in 12 months' time we'll be producing nickel, but we've got a bit more work to do. But in the meantime, we can use that time wisely. We're going to drill target five, which is off to the north. It's about 400 metres out from the decline, and there will be a rig arriving in the next two weeks to start drilling that. 400 metre holes, we're going to drill three. Very, very strong EM target. I've been told by the exploration team that every single EM plate that was ever found up at this mine had mineralisation in it. So hopefully we don't let the, uh, the scorecard down by drilling a dud there, but we're really keen on that. Um, and then we've got an expansion case where we can actually go to 2.2 million tonnes a year and we can process not just the disseminated material but also uh, that's the serpentinite but also the talc carb. So we produce a much lower grade con, a 5 to 6 per cent material, much higher MGO, so not suitable for smelting, but certainly OK to go into an HPAL or a, uh, a POX plant. Uh, there's obviously a couple of HPAL plants in Western Australia already, and we'll have a feasibility study completed or pre-feasibility study completed by the end of this year. So that's exciting. So I've got two minutes to talk about all the rest, so I won't, uh, uh, I'll go as quickly as I can without missing any of the important stuff. So Lake Johnson, uh, as I said before, produced about 100 thousand tonnes of nickel. There's a, there's a processing plant there. Would probably need about $40 million to refurb it and again about, about 12 months. Uh, and Maggie Hayes has got a 50,000 tonnes of nickel uh, sitting below where they mined uh, for a number of years. Uh, the exciting thing that we think uh, though is the exploration potential here. Um, we could go in and restart mining at Maggie Hayes but we'd have to dewater the, the, the underground and put all the services back in again. It'd be a, about a two year job. Um, and we're, what we're looking for now is something that's easy to start up on something like what they started with uh, Emily Ann, which was a 3.5 per cent ore body. Some of the drilling we've done on the western, what we call Maggie Hayes West, it could be a sort of a 400 metre wide um, uh, strike, and so we're going to get back in there again before the end of the year 
and, and drill test that. Um, some really exciting numbers. Um, Peter Michelli, who's on our board, really rates this as a very exciting exploration. So we don't want to let Peter down and we want to get into the drilling there before the end of the year. Again, targeting something higher grade that we can restart the mill and, and get into production. And then last but by no means least, Windara. Um, mine between 74 and 83, about 84,000 tonnes of nickel. There's 70,000 tonnes of nickel in Mount Windara with a developed decline down uh, almost to the top of the ore body. There's Cerberus, which was discovered some years ago, another 70,000 tonnes of nickel, a good grade. Uh, there's the Gold Tailings Project. Uh, we're talking to a, a, a local group that want to process that and also get access to the water. So hopefully we'll have a, a deal done with them in the not too distant future. There's a lot of opportunity here, a lot of exploration potential. Uh, you know, that the, the ore bodies themselves are, are sort of open at depth and, and there's been no work done here probably since about 2008. So there's a huge amount of potential here. Uh, and I think, you know, Windara, again, we, we've looked at trucking the ore from Windara down to uh, Black Swan. At, at, at a higher nickel price, it, it makes money. So it's an option for us. But exploration potential here is enormous and, and it's really been underdone since it's been inside the Poseidon camp. So huge potential there. So where are we? We're an advanced nickel producer or potentially nickel producer. We're in a tier one jurisdiction. We've got a short time frame from the time we press the button at Black Swan to production, about 12 months. We've got all that infrastructure there. Replacement cost would be in the hundreds of millions of dollars at each site. And we've got a very experienced management team and board who can take this business to, into production. Thank you. Right on time. Thanks, Peter.